Welcome to PlayStation Homebrew News. Let's jump straight into it. So the very first repo that I wanted to share here with you today is this one by Darkloft944. And it's just called an explanation of the code for PP Pawn. Now, this one doesn't have any code or anything in it. So it's just simply a readme file. And it kind of goes through everything that we saw in the Flows Python script that was provided. So it comes down in here to even the different types of explanations for each of the stage here. And then there's some more information down here at the bottom about what's going on with each stage. So I thought that was fairly interesting. And so hopefully you'll get something out of that. So the next item that I have here is, is that Apollo Save Tool version 1.44 is out and it does have support for firmware version number 11. And then it has some new cheat codes for these two games right here. Custom save decryption support, which these weren't able to be decrypted before. And then custom checksum support for a number of games right here. There was just a few fixes in here and it mainly went to Metal Gear Solid 5. And then just a few small updates here in the miscellaneous. Definitely, if you jailbreak your console, you definitely want to use Apollo Save Tool in order to be able to transfer your save games on and off of your PlayStation 4. Now, apparently, you can also activate your PlayStation 4 with the new version of Apollo Save Tool. So you definitely want to check that out. And then we had Gold Hen 2.4 B17.2 which came out. Now, this version really just added support for a couple of more firmware versions. So already we had support for version number 11, but here we got support for version 10.00 and 10.01. Now, they also noted in here that this new release supports the previous WebKit exploits and the new PP Pawn, but for this, it requires a custom stage two that I wrote and released the code. That can all be found over here in this repo right here. And if you go underneath releases here, you can see right here is the brand new stage two. So it says this loader only supports payloads with a kernel entry point. The custom version of stage two first looks at the payload in the root directory of the USB drive and it found it's copied to the internal or disk drive at this path. And it states here at this moment, only firmware versions 9, 10, 10.01, and 11 are supported. But there is a mention here that other versions like 9.60 will also be supported. And so they're obviously right there, they're talking about PS3. A lot of folks don't want to update past that, and I really don't blame them. But if you do want to go ahead and play with this stuff now, you are at least going to have to get on version 10, 10.01, or 11. All right, so next up we have PS4 Debug, which also lives right underneath the Gold Hen family there. And if we take a look at what came with PS4 Debug, we can see that now there is version 10.00, 10.01, and then 11.0. Now it states up here for 9.60, they are looking for a tester, but it also supports all those previous versions that we had before. And then again, this is just a debugger for the PlayStation 4. Most end users probably won't have a need for using this, but it definitely is going to help the scene in regards to having PS4 debug working on that 10, 10.01, and that 11.0 system. And then in the last PlayStation Homebrew News episode, I mentioned Linux might be coming to PS4 11. And well, I found this brand new tutorial that just came out, and it was called run PS4 Linux on 11 with 11.0 Linux payloads. And it has a nice tutorial of everything that you need to do in order to get this running. So if you are interested in running Linux and a couple of different variants of that on your PlayStation 4, then you can absolutely do so. I would definitely recommend first heading over and reading through this guide just to get a little bit up to date of what all that you need to do. And if you are interested in running Linux, I saw this repo by Echo Stretch, which has some of the PS4 uh, payloads for the PS4 Fat Pro and a few more other things. So these also have support for versions like 10, 10.01, 10 
And it looks like a few other versions have been added in here too. So definitely check that out. Then going back to PP Pawn, the C++ version has been modified. And what we can see with this is that just a couple of days ago, there was a few more fixes that came in here and it's still actively being developed, which is absolutely terrific. I don't know how many more modifications is left from it from there, but again, make sure you are starting to use this latest version right here because it definitely had a few more things added to it. And then I did want to mention the LG television. So this is the repo that if you want to run this exploit off of LG television, then you should definitely be using this one right here. And while this one hasn't been updated in just about two weeks, there really hasn't been much of a need to, I have seen that one of the developers there has been working on a brand new repo to add support for these devices right here. So this is PP Pawn for STV Box 0.1. And it looks like right now it only supports the AM Logic S905W related boards. So if you do have one of these, then you can go ahead and start using this new repo right here. It's just modified just a couple of days ago. To go ahead and start running it off of that. Now I did look this device up and it was roughly about 40 US dollars. So you might be able to find this cheaper depending on where you live. And then again, there was more updates to Droid PP Pawn. So this allows you to use a rooted Android device in order to jailbreak your PS4 on version 11 or some of those other versions. We can see that this one just had another update and what was included in this one. If you want to come over here to the releases, you can see that for version 1.1, it added support for 32-bit ARM V7A, refactored the whole project, replaced the stage 2.bin, with the brand new one that came out from Cistro's repo. And then you can use your own stage 2.bin and some other small fixes. Jumping over to more ways to run PP Pawn. This is open WRT for PP Pawn. So if you do want to run this on a router, you can absolutely do so. You will just need to take advantage of this project right here. There's a couple of videos out there that shows how to run this on a router if you do need a little bit more instructions. I definitely haven't played with this one just yet because I found so many other great alternatives. And right now I'm really locking my LG TV and then using my Raspberry Pi. Definitely check this out if you want to run this on a router. Now, if you do have a Windows machine and you do have Docker, then you can absolutely just run this in a Docker instance. Now, this person right here has made this really, really simple with just Docker PP Pawn. And it says that this repo contains the Docker file to run PP Pawn easily in an Alpine image. It's ideal for running a Raspberry Pi with a dedicated USB to Ethernet port for the PS4. And only a few things you'd need here on your system. And there is the usage instructions. I'm going to go over to another Windows application. So this is the automated version for Windows, the one that I'm currently using if I am exploiting it based off of my Windows 11 machine. I've mentioned this previously and it seems like a lot of you like this. So I just decided I'd leave this one in here again. So if you do want to take advantage of running this on Windows, this is one of the applications that I found has been really helpful in order to get that complete. Now, I do have a video that walks you through step by step on how to use this. And then finally, for the Raspberry Pi, we've seen tons of improvements over here from Stooged. We can see that the latest update just came, you know, yesterday in here. Obviously, the new version includes all of the new firmwares that Cistro and Golden Hen has recently released and a bunch of other smaller improvements. And then I thought I would at least throw in one rumor here, and it does look like at least from my initial investigation, that Call of Duty Black Ops 6 is coming to the PlayStation 4. We'll have to see how that turns out. And then finally here for the PlayStation 5, there is PS5 Toolbox, which is a repo that contains the PS5 Toolbox, a utility developed with the Tech Center UK for interacting with the PS5 UART connection and BIOS NOR modifier. 
So this one was just modified a couple of hours ago. And this is definitely one of those projects that you're going to want to keep in your back pocket because you might need this at some point in order to get things like error diagnostics and so forth off of the PlayStation 5 system. Well, anyway, that's going to do it for this one. Thank you so very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Michael, Ow!